Greetings, saints, in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I trust uh, the Lord is sustaining you as we celebrate um, the Easter season, what Jesus has done for us on the cross and the finished work of the cross. And it's so key to uh, the series we're currently doing entitled On This Foundation. And uh, this is the fourth installment of the series On This Foundation. And today we're going to talk about the foundation of Jesus Christ in relation to to the Holy Spirit, and that's part four. So I'll read from Galatians chapter 2, verse 21, all the way to chapter 3, verse 14. Paul writes and says, I do not set aside the grace of God, for if righteousness could be gained through the law, Christ died for nothing. You foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you? Before your very eyes, Jesus Christ was clearly portrayed as crucified. I'd like to learn just one thing from you. Did you receive the Spirit by observing the law or by believing what you heard? Are you so foolish? After beginning with the Spirit, are you now trying to attain your goal by human effort? Have you suffered so much for nothing, if it really was for nothing? Does God give you his spirit and work miracles among you because you observe the law or because you believe what you heard? Consider Abraham. He believed God and it was credited to him as righteousness. Understand then that those who believe are children of Abraham. The scripture foresaw that God would justify the Gentiles by faith and announce the gospel in advance to Abraham. All nations will be blessed through you. So those who have faith are blessed along with Abraham, the man of faith. All who rely on observing the law are under a curse. For it is written, Cursed is everyone who does not continue to do everything written in the book of the law. Clearly, no one is justified before God by the law. Because the righteous will live by faith. The law is not based on faith. On the contrary, the man who does these things will live by them. Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is everyone who is hung on a tree. He redeemed us in order that the blessing given to Abraham might come to the Gentiles through Christ Jesus, so that by faith we might receive the promise of the Spirit. We thank God for his precious word and Paul here is writing to believers who are the Galatians and he's writing to them about the fundamentals of the gospel that he's trying to explain and again he's laying a foundation that they should not deviate from and I'll just give a brief background to this book of Galatians and what Paul is talking about before we get into uh, today's actual message. The first thing you see, Paul is really in contention for the original and unadulterated gospel. If you read in chapter 1, you hear Paul write to the Galatians and say that they should stick to the original gospel. And he even says that even if an angel appears from heaven or another person or Paul himself would come again to the Galatian church and preach a different gospel that is not Jesus Christ crucified and risen, he says let that person or that angel be eternally condemned. And he is very fervent about this, about sticking to the original gospel of Jesus Christ, which means that there is always a threat that many other gospels may arise. Even the world we're living today, a lot of people believe that there's many ways to get to God. There's many ways to be saved. There's many ways, and God uh, has uh, diverse ways of reaching different people, which is, a, which is total nonsense because there's only one way to the Father. There's only one way to be saved and to be cleansed of your sin. There's only one way to receive eternal life, and that is through believing and receiving the finished work that Jesus Christ did on the cross of Calvary 2,000 years ago, embracing that exclusively. That is the only way of salvation. And that was what Paul was trying to really bring across in the book of Galatians. The next thing is he's talking about the importance of making a clean transition from law to grace through faith. A clean transition, not a hybrid of 
taking certain elements of the law and trying to keep Jewish traditions and believing that keeping those traditions will somehow enhance your salvation or facilitate your salvation, while at the same time wanting to believe that Jesus Christ is the Messiah and is the salvation. And Paul is saying, guys, make a clean and clear transition. If you're living and you believe in the gospel of grace, then don't try and start to earn your salvation, earn grace again. That just doesn't work. Either you're under law or you're under grace. And Paul really brings this point across. The other point he also brings out is that sonship is there, is given to all who believe in Jesus Christ and receive him as their savior, regardless of your gender, regardless of your background, whatever background, your, uh, the color of your skin or the status of your wealth, all those things become immaterial. As long as you receive Jesus Christ as your savior, you become a son, a child of God. And the other thing, finally, that Paul talks about in this book is uh, that to walk in freedom, spiritual freedom, you need the empowerment of the Holy Spirit, and it makes it very possible, in fact, almost effortless, when you are filled and led by the Holy Spirit. It doesn't become difficult to live out the gospel of Jesus Christ. So now, just getting in to the elements of today's message. And the first thing is that Paul clearly brings out the truth that to receive the Holy Spirit according to the Word of God, it has to be based on your relationship with Jesus Christ and you receiving the gospel by faith. In verse 2 and, and in verse 5 of Galatians chapter 3, Paul makes this point very strongly and he asks a rhetorical question and he says, Did you believe the Spirit because of something else that you did, some great work, or by simply believing what you heard, the gospel. And he emphasizes this. So he's clearly saying that the Galatian church, who were clearly baptized in the Holy Spirit and operating in spiritual gifts, did so, were able to do so on one basis, on the basis that they heard the gospel of Jesus Christ and they believed it, and God gave them the Holy Spirit. And this is very important for people to understand because the Galatian church was slowly beginning to mingle or to mix the gospel of Christ with works, with traditions of man, with uh, religious works and religious performance. And Paul is trying to remind them and say, when you began your journey with Jesus Christ, you didn't perform in any way, you didn't do anything impressive, you realized you couldn't do it, and you realized that by grace, you just needed to believe because there's nothing you could do to save yourself. And you believed and therefore, because you believed that Jesus did die and you received that message with faith, God then gave you his Holy Spirit. That's how you began. But he's chastising them because it seems that they've forgotten how they began and they were at a place where they understood that they, to begin their journey with the Lord and the new covenant, they had to believe and embrace the truth fully based on faith, without any works of their own or ability of their own. But suddenly now they're believing that they need to shift. To start your relationship with God, you need to believe and trust God because you can't save yourself. But after that, you then say, okay, thanks, Lord. Now let me take over. And, and Paul is saying that is a very foolish thing to do. You start by faith. The Bible says the gospel is from faith to faith. It's not from faith to works. It's faith to faith. The same faith and the same premise upon which you begin your relationship with God is the premise upon which you continue. You trust him for your salvation and you trust him for your daily sanctification and you walk with him by faith. You don't try to now start attaining and earning things of God just like you couldn't earn your salvation. You can't earn the Holy Spirit and you can't earn God's favor. And that's what Paul is emphasizing. That is through your belief in the gospel that God decided to give you and to pour out his spirit upon you. Nothing else you could do. The Bible even states that Jesus himself is the one who baptizes us in the Holy Spirit. For instance, in John chapter 1 verse 33, John the Baptist makes this point that God told him that the one coming, that's Jesus Christ at that time, he was on his way, is the one who would baptize people in the Holy Spirit. So again, the emphasis on this foundation that if you want to have a relationship with the Holy Spirit, if anyone desires to have the Holy Spirit, the true Holy Spirit of God, 
It cannot happen apart from a relationship with Jesus Christ, apart from understanding and depending purely on the gospel and not on anything else, not trying to perform or to earn. One has to understand that it's through faith in Jesus Christ that you receive the Holy Spirit. Because there are many people who claim to have the Holy Spirit or to operate by the power and the gifts of the Holy Spirit. But if they are not doing it on the foundation of Jesus Christ, they, are not, they did not establish that relationship through hearing and receiving the gospel, then I don't know what spirit it is they are operating by, but it's not the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit comes through Jesus Christ. He is the baptizer in the Holy Spirit. And it's only through... Uh, specific relationship with Jesus Christ by faith that you can gain access to the Holy Spirit and to spiritual gifts. And that's why in the book of Acts chapter 2, as Peter was preaching to a crowd who had witnessed the Holy Spirit come down, and these were many of them were Jewish people, and he tells them that repent, believe in Jesus Christ, and you will receive the promise. Receive the gospel, and you receive the Holy Spirit. Those two are synonymous. You cannot separate the gospel of Jesus Christ and the manifestation, and the work, and the infilling of the Holy Spirit. The next point I would like to make here is that, subsequent to this, we have to be aware of any deviation from a gospel-centered approach to the Holy Spirit. A genuine baptism in the Holy Spirit will always come through the preaching of the gospel, where the gospel is preached, people hear about who Jesus is and they believe it in their hearts, whether they are then prayed for. And we see that happening in the book of Acts chapter 8, for example, Acts chapter 19, in various places in the Bible, the, the apostles would lay hands on believers and they would receive the Holy Spirit. It may happen spontaneously, for instance, in Acts chapter 10 in the house of Cornelius. But you find that one consistent condition, precondition there was that they had to hear the gospel and believe it, whether they then receive the Holy Spirit spontaneously or through laying on of hands. But the precondition there, which cannot be negated, is that people have to hear about Jesus, hear about the Easter story, hear about what he did for us on the cross, hear that they are sinners and that they need to be washed only by the blood of Jesus by faith and receive that, and that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. He died, and on the third day he rose again and is coming back as a soul, savior, and messiah of humanity. And when they believe that, then they gain access to receiving the Holy Spirit. Now this then brings us to a very important point that how people view their relationship with the Holy Spirit or the doctrine that any grouping has in terms of how you get filled with the Holy Spirit can actually be an indicator as to whether those people are walking in truth or they're walking in error. This is a very good indicator for us. How do they believe that the Holy Spirit comes? I've just talked about a few minutes ago how um, the Holy Spirit comes to us purely on the basis of the gospel, which we receive by faith. And we cannot do anything to perform or to earn uh, the gift of the Holy Spirit, the power of the Holy Spirit, the manifestations of the Holy Spirit, is simply by believing what God has done for us through Jesus Christ. Now, if you find yourself in a situation where you are being taught or you are starting to believe that you have to do something special or peculiar for you to be filled with the Holy Spirit, that unless you do that peculiar act that is based on your, based on your strength or your ability, then the Holy Spirit is not going to fill you. And that act has got nothing to do with the finished work that was done by Jesus Christ. Then it means there is clear error. In some groupings or some um, congregations, people believe that the Holy Spirit um, is passed down um, through uh, inheritance, hereditary uh, influence, that if the, the founder of the church or the bishop, the archbishop was filled with the Holy Spirit and performed many miracles, then that bishop's son automatically by virtue of being their physical son should take over because only they have access to the same Holy Spirit. And that is error. That is a lie. That is not how the Holy Spirit comes. The Holy Spirit comes not because of who your physical father is. He comes because you believe in Jesus and that therefore God the Father becomes your father. And you, are, you have access, the same access that that bishop or that founder 
had or has the Holy Spirit, you have if you have the same faith in Jesus Christ. Some people then believe that if you don't sacrifice, if you don't give a specific seed or an amount of money to uh, the man of God, so to speak, or the servant of God, then you cannot partake of the anointing and the power of the Holy Spirit. Now that again is completely false. The Holy Spirit comes purely on the basis of the gospel. You believe in Jesus, you believe what he did for you, you believe that he died and he rose again and that only he can wash your sin and you ask him to do that. Once you do that, you have full access. It doesn't matter how long you've been a believer, how long you've been in the church, or whether you have fasted very a long time or you have not fasted at all. The fact that you believe that Jesus is your Savior and you hold on to that exclusively, without mixing it with other ideologies or religions, then you have a right or access to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. So, And it's quite interesting if you do a little study on how cults develop. You'll find that in many of the cases, it's the founder who is endowed with special power, but his followers don't have any of that power. And the more that cult uh, goes over time, you find that the manifestations of the Spirit, if there were manifestations of the Spirit, they dwindle because they say it was this one special man. And therefore you find that uh, people begin to even venerate the, the bishop or the founder of that church, even if they are dead. There are stories I've heard even of here in Zimbabwe where people actually still go to the tomb of one of the founders of uh, some of these cults and they uh, wash this embalmed body with water and they believe that that water that they wash this uh, embalmed body with on a yearly basis is the water that will give them the grace and the anointing because only this person had that anointing. Though Even though they died decades ago, they still go to that person's shrine and try to seek power because they don't believe they can do it themselves. It's a subtle form of ancestral worship. That is demonic saints. The Holy Spirit is open and we have access, all have access to him through faith, in Jesus Christ. So we have to realize, saints, that if there is any deviation regarding how the Holy Spirit comes, we've, if you're told you have to perform, if you're told you have to pay, if you're told um, you have to do something special for the founder or the, the leader of that church, you are told that you have to do anything weird, you are told you have to pray through a specific saint or a dead person to receive the Holy Spirit or to have that manifestation, then that is error. And you cannot enjoy the fruit and the power of the Holy Spirit if you try to seek the Holy Spirit that way through earning him. And it's quite interesting that Paul actually likens this error to uh, being bewitched, as we read in Galatians chapter 3. He says, who bewitched you? So when you're trying to live a life that is spirit-filled, but any other way apart from faith in Jesus, you're actually similar to someone who has been bewitched. And what happens with someone who's been bewitched? They do things, they are compelled to do things that they cannot stop, but they don't want to do those things. They are compelled to do things that don't benefit them. They're compelled to do things that actually waste their time. They're compelled to do things that even hurt or destroy them, even against their own will. But they can't help but do these things that don't benefit or help them. And that's what happens when someone is bewitched. I'm reminded of some many cases we've come across. Sometimes a young man would come when we would be doing crusades out in the rural areas. And he's, he has such a strong spirit of lust and seduction. And it compels him to seek and to seduce women, married women or even uh, virgins. And he does it successfully by the demonic power on him. He doesn't want to do it, but he finds himself doing this. And he does it successfully, but he knows it's destructive. He knows it will get him HIV. He knows it is, uh, God doesn't want him to do it, but there's a compelling force. And he says, Pastor, I don't want to do this. And when we pray in the name of Jesus and he's set free, suddenly he's not compelled to do that anymore because he was bewitched. He couldn't help it. He was doing things that are useless and self-destructive, but he had no control to stop it. I remember another dramatic case of a certain young lady that we ministered to in Bikita. And um, she had an issue where she wanted to get married, but she would always find herself entangled with married men. Married men seemed to be so attracted to her. And they are the ones who would come and, and quote her and, and try and uh, get into a relationship with her. It was 
no young man, no single man would ever come. She was also working for a particular shop owner, and this shop owner hadn't paid her for nine months, but she just kept working there. And she was like a slave. Her life was a life of slavery, and that's witchcraft. And again, when she was set free in the name of Jesus, within two days she came back. Her ninth-month uh, debt that her, her boss owed her was paid all instantaneously. And uh, now she had a line of young men coming saying, we want to uh, get into a relationship with you. And she was saying, now I'm praying for the Lord to help me restrain myself and to, to keep a level head because no married men are coming after me anymore. It's just young men who are serious. And I'm, I'm saying, what's going on? Because the curse had been lifted. There was a curse upon her life. And that's what happens, saints. When you are trying to religiously uh, earn or have the power of the Holy Spirit, it's a curse, it's a burden, it's a yoke that you carry, and you don't enjoy it. Jesus said, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. If you find yourself uh, that worshiping the Lord is really um, a drudgery, it's really hard, it's it's not fulfilling, but you're saying, you know what, I'm just, I must just suck it up and do it. And you're finding yourself constantly having to suck it up. And worshiping the Lord is a chore. And there's no joy. And you're having to grind it out. And you're having to master all your strength. And you're having to put up a certain picture in front of people. And then the moment they leave, you crumble um, in a private space and say, oh my God, where am I going? What's happening with me? Lord, help me. I can't do this. And you're constantly feeling you're having to perform. It's a struggle. Then that is the same scenario. That shows that perhaps it's that witchcraft power of religion that is weighing you down. And you keep doing these things though they're not helping you because there's a religious deception. And the devil has deceived you through witchcraft to think that you have to earn your way to heaven. You have to earn the power of the Holy Spirit. That the Holy Spirit is for certain special people, uh, for apostles, for ministers, for pastors, not for puny little me. That is the witchcraft of Satan operating in your mind to deceive you to live like a spiritual slave and not enjoy your walk with the Lord. Because saints, when the Holy Spirit is in operation in your life, he makes it easy for you to walk and to live out the gospel, to walk in love, to worship God, to set aside time to pray, to share the gospel with other people who do not know the Lord, to do the right thing, to shun corruption, to shun lust and fornication. It doesn't become such a huge burdensome task. In fact, it becomes a joy to walk in righteousness because that is what the Holy Spirit enables you to do. And Paul was talking about this, how we need to walk in freedom, how we need to walk in grace and not try and live by the works of the law and trying to refer back to the law. And do I, am I doing this right? Am I doing this right? But when you have the spirit, it also, it just becomes like your second nature to do the right thing and to worship the Lord. And it's not a drudgery. It's not uh, a, a difficult effort that you have to make. He gives you supernatural strength. So while we're talking about the issue of walking in grace and how it's so wonderful to walk in grace and not to try and follow many of the written laws that were there in the Bible, we cannot do this, however, without the help of the Holy Spirit. It's a fallacy to believe that you can actually really walk in grace and understand grace without the help of the Holy Spirit. That's why it's called the helper, and we need him. And how do we gain access to him and walk with him? We believe the pure, unadulterated gospel. We don't mix it. No matter how um, appealing it looks to say, look, there can't be only one way to God. Surely you can't tell me that the millions and millions of, of Muslims or Hindus and all these people are going to perish because it doesn't seem appealing. It doesn't seem right. The gospel has got nothing to do with what seems right to man. If someone doesn't receive Jesus Christ and believe in the gospel, they cannot be saved. They cannot be filled with the Spirit. And if you're not willing to believe in the gospel exclusively, you cannot truly and fully enjoy walking in the Holy Spirit. Because you cannot separate the manifestation and the power of the Holy Spirit with the pure and unadulterated gospel of Jesus Christ. So saints, I pray that this has been meaningful. We're talking about the foundation. 
And today we're talking about the Holy Spirit. And the same gospel of Jesus Christ is the foundation of walking with the Holy Spirit and being filled with the Holy Spirit. And next week, our next installment, which is the last one in this series, we'll talk about the, uh, this foundation in relation to false teaching. So, saints, we need the Holy Spirit. We need the infilling. He is our helper. He is available to us. He's available to everyone. Even if you do not speak in tongues yet and you've not experienced the gifts of the Holy Spirit and you desire, if you believe in the gospel, you believe in Jesus Christ exclusively and you ask him and say, Lord, I want to be filled the Holy, with the Holy Spirit. Even if there's no one there to lay hands on you. That's what I experienced. When I got laid hands on, I didn't receive the baptism because to be honest, I was skeptical. But when I sought the Lord earnestly, privately, the power of the Holy Spirit overshadowed me and I began to speak in other tongues. And God can do that for you if you're willing to believe the true Easter story of what Jesus Christ did and to believe that is the only way. And you let him wash you of your sins. He will give you his Holy Spirit. So be blessed, saints. Seek the Holy Spirit. And may the blood of Jesus shed in this season that we celebrate speak good things over your life. In Jesus' name.